It's been a long, hard slog in getting there, but gold priced in dollars is now at around the 2000 level, not too far away from those record highs we saw not too many months ago. Uh, but the big question is, is whether or not we're going to be able to get through this level and then start to breathe fresh air above that key 2000 psychologically important level. Let's take a look at the technicals around this now with a regular guest here on IGTV. It's Ron William from RW Advisory. Ron, Welcome. It's an interesting point. Uh, you've done some research around this, I know. And when we were talking about getting this interview together, uh, you thought you could come up with some chance to explain what's going on. Uh, let's start, if we can, with you asking just to set the scene, because clearly this is a, a, a long, ongoing story. Absolutely. And as uh, everyone will be uh, aware, the gold retest of $2,000 uh, glass ceiling is here again. Um, and that is uh, following a uh, previous retest that we saw um, in uh, March 2022 and August uh, 2020, which is what we see on the opening chart. Uh, what's interesting is that it also extends a 25% gain from the trend extremes, uh, while also generating the highest monthly and quarterly close in history. So certainly headline grabbing uh, gold price action. Uh, if we take a step back and look at what happened uh, in the month previous, uh, uh, which, uh, that, that happened in the latest upswing was actually following the March panic, uh, igniting a renewed flight to safety. So certainly that remains uh, in, in, in the back scene for now. Uh, but when we look at gold uh, across asset, if we just see the uh, bottom right hand chart, uh, gold outshines. Uh, uh, world equities, notably uh, US and China, uh, plus other cross-asset proxies. Yet in the short-term uh, ranking uh, scores that, that you see there on the diagram, it is unwinding, uh, having uh, become overbought. So Ron, that's taking a look at gold in dollars. But as I said at the top, it is possible to price gold in other currencies. What's happening in other currencies when you look at the gold price? Broad strength uh, of gold, and certainly this reemphasizes that the rising tide lifts all boats, not just gold in dollar terms, which I know is is, is the proxy that we're all looking at, given especially given that it um, is retesting that two thousand dollar glass ceiling. What's interesting is that a you get the broad strength of gold versus other currencies, but b um, you can see that gold in dollar terms is the underperformer of the basket. Uh, so you see the blue line there in figure one on the left side um, is actually at the lowest point in the chart, whereas on the highest you have uh, gold versus South Africa Rand, Japanese yen. Some of this is FX uh, case specific volatility, but across the board, gold is outperforming other currencies and in many uh, 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 situations at all time highs. Uh, so this is a, a strong gold story and it really is more about how you trade it. Uh, and what's interesting is if we look at the, the chart inserts on the right, uh, gold is on side gold. Uh, uh, sorry, the dollar is on side gold uh, this year. Uh, so it is actually supporting uh, the, the upswing in, in uh, gold, given that dollar is down 5% year to date. Um, and big picture macro, uh, this continues to spell the fiat debasement story, uh, particularly as central bank policy continues to balloon uh, debt. We have the uh, debt ceiling. Um, uh, meeting coming up in the US. Um, and as you can see there, figure three, uh, history teaches us that the debasement um, is, is what happens uh, overall um, versus the gold, and, and that will continue to be more This is an interesting point, isn't it? Because this whole point about uh, gold and this debasement of currencies, and gold is a, a good place to hide. This, of course, is one of the reasons as to why we've seen so much around Bitcoin recently and the success that Bitcoin has had uh, because it enables us to get exposure to an area of the market which doesn't get debased. How, how do you deal with the Bitcoin gold conundrum? It certainly has uh, attracted lots of uh, attention and, and also flows. 
the the best work um, uh, I've seen on this is is from industry colleague Charlie Morris that's designed an index called Bold, uh, which is a combination of uh, Bitcoin and gold. It's an 80-20 split. Uh, so with with the greater part, 80% uh, on the gold side, that in my mind is 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 one of the better ways to uh, consider the combination of the two and rotate. Uh, it, in terms of performance, but also uh, how how they both um, offer long term returns. Okay, let's get back uh, to the charts and go with with the next chart, which looks at the uh, long term chart for gold. Because uh, it's one thing looking at the two thousand level, but I think in the terms of the long term uh, performance, uh, what are your thoughts on where gold has come from? Yes. So in terms of long term performance has been positive and, and, and partly in, in recent times uh, because of central bank uh, optimism in gold. So our next chart uh, themed sovereign risk uh, as, as the driver for this um, highlights that central bank uh, demand and purchases of gold, although it's at the margin in terms of how it impacts gold, is at a generational high. I think it's a 50, 55 year um, uh, extreme. Uh, so it's up 18% last year. Um, you can see that on figure one. And what's very interesting about that is it's it's also being supported by sovereign risk. You can see the top right uh, chart, uh, figure two, um, showing um, that, uh, that concern. Um, from money printing, uh, sovereign risk. This also occurred in 2008 uh, GFC, 2011 debt crisis, and to lesser degree in 2020 COVID. Uh, it's also a result of central banks un underwriting all bank deposits. Again, going back to that March uh, banking crisis uh, event, um, you know, it, it may have been partly solved now, uh, but at a price, and we're starting to see um, the issues of that uh, in, in um, diversification into gold on the central bank level. Uh, the last chart there, uh, very interesting and uh, uh, and, and uh, timely, showing um, that uh, central banks around the world, uh, primarily China, um, are choosing gold over US Treasury. So this is part of the diversification uh, play uh, with the geopolitical uh, um, risks uh, that started from last year vis-a-vis -vis Russia, Ukraine, um, and the sanctions that followed, um, there is a, a new shift now in policy, and that is now uh, diversifying away from US dollar uh, and US treasuries and, and the next place to, uh, to um, hedge uh, for many central banks is uh, gold. So again, this, this doesn't create trends, but it does, uh, at the margin, support the gold surge. Okay, let's let's go back then to where we are today and talk a little bit more about where you see gold going. You mentioned the fact that gold and the dollar work uh, with this inverse correlation. I noticed actually as we speak, uh, we're looking as though we could well end up with the first week in seven where we got the, the dollar rebounding. And if you take these correlations, I have to ask you whether or not the short term we are likely to see a little bit of a pullback in the price of gold before further uh, acceleration. What is your view of the here and now? Gold uh, short term down here and now, uh, pressured by a triple whammy uh, a bearish signal. So that's number one, price exhaustion, two, momentum divergence, and three, uh, cycles uh, uh, signaling uh, downside into Q2. And that is further supported by the dollar rebound that you just highlighted. So while the dollar did assist uh, on the way up to $2,000 uh, gold in dollar uh, at that uh, key level, it, it will also add headwinds uh, on the way down. Despite gold being broadly strong, uh, it will also uh, influence at the margin. Uh, so we can see that in the chart there. Uh, we also had multiple uh, uh, reversal signals uh, as gold traded into 2000. So uh, from, a, from a data point of view, we hit the level, but from a behavioral perspective, uh, we did it reluctantly. <laughs> um, and there was, uh, there was some uh, resistance along the way. Um, looking ahead, uh, the, the ch it's, it's important to keep in mind that while we might have a short-term tactical opportunity on gold, Medium to long term, investors should think about this as a buy on the dip opportunity. And certainly that's what is being reflected in the sentiment data. If you look at the bottom right uh, chart, 
insert figure three, uh, investors are accumulating. And this is what you want to see uh, for uh, additional um, elevation in gold uh, into the future. Just wrapping it all together, what is the longer term price target now then? Yes, for those looking ahead, uh, wanting to buy on the dip uh, on this on this next uh, setback opportunity, uh, it's it's good to look at gold in inflation adjusted terms, uh, and that at least uh, gives us more of a uh, true benchmark measure. Uh, when doing so, we see that there's a target at 2,800, which was the old high back in 1980. That's the first point. Um, in addition to that, we should keep in mind uh, a double hedge risk of both macro and uh, geopolitical. So macro in terms of inflation and geopolitics in terms of uh, exactly that, tensions of what happened in 1980. Uh, we had the Soviet Afghanistan incursion, Iranian revolution, high inflation, 1973-74, Yom Kippur, oil shock, equity crash and stagflation. And while history doesn't have to repeat, it can certainly rhyme, um, certainly with what's happened last year, Russia, Ukraine, and, and potentially more tensions ahead, uh, gold continues to be a hedge both for long-term inflation um, and uh, just general geopolitical risk and, and any other uncertainty. It is the place for safety. Um, and do notice that we uh, that commodities per se, gold in particular, can spike. And that's what the historical pattern shows us. Back in 1980, it did jump by $700 in just one week. While that's difficult to trade, it is still something to uh, keep in the back of our mind in terms of a potential scenario for gold. Yeah, interesting. Look, uh, Ron, thanks so much indeed for joining us. It uh, gives an insight into where we are in terms of some of the technicals around uh, the gold price and some of the possibilities uh, in the longer term. That's Ron William from RW Advisory.